Clover to New Zealand's economy is very, very important. It's the backbone of our pastures. It introduces a lot of nitrogen to our pastures. It gives our pastures the quality that our grazing animals need to put on weight and put on weight quickly. We need nitrogen to produce protein. We need nitrogen to produce our grazing animals. If we don't have that clover, we have to look at getting nitrogen from another source, and that usually comes out of the bag in the form of urea. That's a very expensive option. Having that clover in our pastures gives our farmers the edge over overseas producers. It allows them to compete and compete very successfully on an international stage. If we didn't have it, the cost to our country would be somewhere between three and four billion dollars per year just in lost production. So clover is a very, very important plant to us. When something like clover root weevil arrives, it arrives without a lot of the other organisms which would normally form part of the ecosystem it lives in. So natural enemies, things like um, parasitoid wasps, which we're going to talk about, fungi, bacteria, all sorts of things which would normally keep the numbers of that pest down. So when clover root weevil arrived in the country, it had no natural enemies, it arrived without them. It also faced a, a huge food resource in the amount of clover that we had in our pastures. So it was almost like a kid in a lolly shop, unlimited food nothing to keep it in control, and its numbers just exploded. When you look at a pasture that's been affected by clover root weevil, one of the giveaway signs that it's present is that the pasture looks a bit yellow, and that's because the larvae have taken the nitrogen out of the system, so the plants aren't growing as well as they normally could. Also, if you look at the clover leaves and you see very distinctive half-moon shaped notches on the side of the clover leaves, that's another very good indication that clover root weevil is present. The larvae burrow down into the ground looking for something to eat. The first thing they find, or the first thing they look for, are clover root nodules. Those larvae, when they've finished cleaning out the, the root nodules, will start feeding on the clover root hairs and then on the clover roots themselves, putting a lot of pressure on the clover plant from underneath the ground. Traditionally, when our farms were faced with a, a pest like clover root weevil, the natural response was to, to reach for a can of insecticide and put insecticide onto their pastures. But for various reasons, that's not really a desirable option. Um, apart from the severe environmental effects a lot of insecticides have, they're very expensive. And in this case, it just would not work. Insecticide control of clover root weevil isn't an option. So we realised very early on in its invasion days that we had to look for biocontrol option. Biocontrol is using one organism to keep the numbers of another organism down to more manageable levels. The weevil arrived in New Zealand back in about 1996, well, that's when we found it. And it arrived to start with up in the North Island. The North Island farmers uh, were suffering severely from the weevil. The weevil was just taking clover right out of their pastures, and very, very many of them were seriously considering how they could carry on farming in the face of such a threat. So their backs were to the wall, they, they were really struggling, and it was a very, very major issue to them. Our scientists went back to where the, the weevil had come from in Europe and started to look to see what organisms back in Europe were keeping a lid on the population of, of weevils over there, because in Europe this thing isn't much of a pest at all. So the small wasp we brought into the country is what we call a parasitoid wasp, and that means that the adult wasp lays its egg inside the weevil. That egg hatches inside the weevil, and the wasp grub spends pretty much all of its life in there for about three or four weeks until it decides that it's, it's big enough to turn into an adult wasp itself, at which stage it bursts out of the weevil, forms a cocoon in the soil, and after another week or 10 days, a new adult wasp emerges. Now each of these female wasps can parasitize up to 60 weevils, and they'll get through three or four generations in a year. A very important thing about these wasps is that they're all females. There are no males of this uh, particular species. And from a biological point of view, that's very important because that means that every wasp there is is going to lay eggs and going to parasitize weevils. So when we look at, uh, at achieving parasitism in the field, there's no set level for determining whether parasitism is successful or not. With biocontrol, we'll never control all of the weevils there. There's always going to be some weevils that aren't parasitized. But if we can reduce the number of weevils in the pasture down to a level that the pasture can support, then we consider biocontrol successful. If we can get 85 to 90 percent of the weevils in the field parasitized, then that's a very good level to be at. If you go to the North Island now and speak to them, what are we are 15, 20 years later almost, clover root weevil just isn't a problem to North Island farms anymore.